there was a, a young man who wanted to know why we should be baptized. And I said, because Jesus commanded it. He says, well, why would Jesus command it? Well, for a lot of reasons. That's what I hope to be able to satisfy right now. In fact, the first passage I'd like to read to you is from Matthew chapter 28, in which Jesus is just getting ready to leave this earth. This is what he had to say to the disciples. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you until the very end of the age. There is Jesus' command, the last thing he says on the earth before he uh, ascends into heaven according to the Gospel of Matthew, and the, the thing that we need to take upon ourselves. So if no other reason than that Jesus commanded, that should be enough. But the Apostle Paul actually gives us a lot of insight about what it means to be baptized in that it really is a confirmation of our being identified with Christ. Because when Christ came to this world, he not only died the death that we deserve to die, but he lived the life that we were supposed to have lived. A lot of people think that, well, Jesus came and died for my sins and that's all he did. Well, gee, no. He did everything that we were required to do. He even was baptized himself when he didn't need to be baptized. When John the Baptist, uh, when he came to John the Baptist and asked him to be baptized, John the Baptist says, I have no business baptizing you. You're already righteous. You don't need to be, be baptized. And Jesus said, no, I need to be baptized in order for all righteousness to be fulfilled. He did everything we were supposed to do. He lived everything we were required to do. He didn't do the things we weren't supposed to do because he lived our life in the righteous way that we were supposed to live it. And that's why he invites us to identify with him. The Apostle Paul uses the word in Christ in the New Testament some 170 times in order to remind us that when you ask Jesus as your Savior, when you invite him into your heart, you are in Christ. And everything that was afforded to Christ is now afforded to us. And so the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6 wants us to make a firm identification with what it means to be in Christ. And so he encourages the believers to be immersed. Now, there's nothing wrong with sprinkling. It's, it's just as good a symbol and a sign of the reality that, that baptism is. But there's something special about being immersed that identifies with, with Christ. I'd like to read this passage. It's from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. This is what the Apostle Paul has to say. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live any longer in it? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism and death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through glory of the glory of the Father, we too have a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. I don't know if you picked up all that the Apostle Paul is saying there, but it's a huge and powerful uh, uh, analogy. And what you're going to watch is eight people that are on the verge of death coming to a brand new life. 
don't worry, I won't hold them out of that one. <laughs> but there's a, there's a really powerful symbol with, with having a candidate stand there before you all and to say that now I ba I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and immerse them down as if they're dead and buried and then bring them up to a brand new life. Because that's really what we're, we're uh, asked to do when we come into Christ, is live a brand new life. And to realize that all that Christ did for us is now us, because we're in Christ. And that Christ has given us that, uh, that wonderful and glorious benefit of being in His. Um, I may do a little bit of explaining, explaining? <laughs> explaining on uh, a couple of them, so that Ryan can get the words that he knows. Um, but I thought since we have primarily adults here, I would uh, do the adult questions. Ryan knows all the words except for one. So we're good on all except for one. Two questions. Here's the first question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you have assurance that your sins are forgiven through faith in Jesus Christ? If so, answer, yes. Yes. I'm going to mix it up, so watch out. <laughs> and the word renounce means to do away with it. You don't want to have anything to do with it, okay? Do you renounce Satan and his works? If so, answer yes. Yes. Do you renounce the ungodliness of this world and all sinful desires? If so, answer yes. 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 Will you live in obedience to the will, in obedience to Christ? If so, answer I will. I will. Will you actively participate in the life of ministry and ministry of this church? If so, answer I will. I will. And do you accept the Old and New Testaments as the authority for your life? If so, oh, answer, I do. I do. I do. And will you, by this act of baptism, testify to the world that you are a Christian? If so, answer, I do. I do. Mary Alice Delaney, I baptize you in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Lynn Green, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's exhilarating. <laughs> and Karen Jeanette yes. Green. Yes. Karen Jeanette Green, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ellen Catherine Georges, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hannah Marie Miller, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Michaela Quinn Coles, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and my grandson Ryan came to me and said, "Dad, I like Grandpa. I'd like to be baptized." And so this is our opportunity to uh, baptize Ryan. Ryan Dean Saunders, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then Charles, I don't know uh, how much you know about Charles in the last five years of his life, but Charles has made unbelievable uh, strides in, in his Christian walk. And, and uh, was it just two years ago you were in prison, Charles? Yeah. Two years ago I was. Oh, about nice more. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, spending about once a week going visiting Charles in prison, and uh, I've just been amazed at his progress and just his walk with the Lord. How he's really faithful to be at worship, and how he's just really faithful to want to, and eager to learn God's Word. And so it is my uh, high honor and privilege to be able to baptize Charles. Just, it's just what it means to become a Christian and see the transformation that's happened in his life. So, Charles Midget, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you all, church body.
everybody for being here and being a part of this. It's been really, really neat to see this much support for the candidates. We have some refreshments. Please make the use of those. We don't want anything to take home. It would be too much work, so please eat them all. <laughs> Feel free to stay around and uh, just mingle. I'm sure the Havilands would love to have that happen. Thank you so much for coming.